Hey, it's a lockdown look up day something. I don't even know what day it is anymore. But what I do know is we're busy with the series through the armor of God. And we're just kind of doing a little bit of introduction before we get to the well-known parts of putting on the breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation and all of those wonderful things. So uh, yesterday I spoke to you just about the three imperatives in this passage. So as we are uh, faced with the reality that there is direct opposition to living a flourishing Christian life, and that opposition does in part come from uh, a real uh, enemy known as the devil, that there are three imperatives given in this passage in Ephesians 6 verses 10 through to 24, three things that we're supposed to be doing. And those three things are to be strong, to put on or take up the various pieces of armor, and then to stand. And yesterday we looked at that first imperative, to be strong, and how strange it is to be told to be strong, and we saw what that meant is to be strengthened. Now today we're going to get to the second part of that imper uh, second imperative in that passage. Uh, so let's have a look at the beginning of our passage again. Ephesians 6, I'm going to read verses uh, 10 to 13. And it says this, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. So there you go. There's all three of those imperatives just in those introductory few verses. So we're looking at we're looking at two so far. Be strong. Secondly, put on, which is verse 10 or 13, take up these pieces of armor. And what I want to talk to you about today is the relationship between these two first two commands because it's important. Be strong and then put on the armor of God. And the relationship is important. Here's why. Because perhaps when you're faced with the reality that there is opposition in the Christian life, you may tend towards one of two opposite but equal errors. So the first error is kind of if we just landed on be strong, which remember is to be strengthened in the Lord. If that's all there was in the passage, we would hear that and go, hey, be strong in God and His capability to assert His authority. We go, okay, we receive that strength and we just kind of, let it go. So kind of the classic uh, phrase people use is just let go and let God. Well, that would be um, only half of the truth in this passage because it doesn't just stay with be strengthened. It goes from be strengthened to put on. Uh, so there is an active part to this battle. Uh, it's not just the passive receiving strength. There is an active part. And there are other passages of Scripture that exhort us uh, to this all the time. So James 4 verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. So there is an active resisting part. First Peter 5 verse 8 to 9 says this, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him. Firm in your faith. So there is a second part. It's not just be strong. It's be strong and put on. There's this active part. Uh, but some people might tend towards just the active part. So they may hear the put on. So the, the spiritual warfare comes down to you running out and you doing your thing. No, no, no. First, be strengthened. First, be reminded that strength comes from God, that it's God's power. You've got to start there. And then once you've been strengthened, once you've reminded yourself that it's God's power, not yours, then you put on all these various attitudes and actions that we are going to explore in the next few weeks. So the relationship between the two is important. So before we get to in the next couple of days, really exploring the active side of the armor of God. I think it's important to say as well that this armor of God passage uh, is just so helpful because it's memorable. You've come across it 
Uh, perhaps if you've been a Christian for a long time or since you were a child, you've certainly come across this. But let's just remember, this is not everything that there is uh, when it comes to this subject. And indeed, even there's references to the similar kind of metaphor of a breastplate in 1 Thessalonians 5. Except there, in verse 8, it is the breastplate of faith and love not the breastplate of, of righteousness. And so we want to be careful as we get into this armor of God to not over-interpret these metaphors. And basically, it just comes down to this. The point is that we must be actively engaged and employing everything that we have in, uh, in our facing of this opposition. Uh, but remember, to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, start there. And then we actively engage in all of these various kinds of ways. And so I hope that that motivates you today. That gives you courage in your being strong in the Lord. And that motivates you to resist and to resist. And tomorrow we'll talk a little bit more about what it means to stand. And then I promise we will get into each of the pieces of these armor. Remember, we have kids activities if you're at home and with kids uh, to help your kids uh, learn this wonderful piece of scripture. But I'm going to pray and then um, let you carry on in your, hopefully, in your triumphant, victorious Christian walk. So God, we pray, we come before you and we are again just encouraged and emboldened by the strength that we receive from you. It's your power, your capability to assert your authority is immense and is beyond any form of opposition. And so we pray for great courage and boldness and peace. And then, Lord, would you help us to engage actively in a way that your word describes to engage in resisting this form of opposition that we know we already have victory over in your name, Jesus. Amen. See you guys tomorrow.